Hi everyone, welcome to another informative video of NS Pharma. In today's video, we are going to see 10 questions from 2019 ESIC Pharmacist Question Paper. So if you like this video, please make thumbs up and also subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell button. So let's begin this session. The first question is, Bismuth subcarbonate is an Bismuth subcarbonate is an Options are Option A Diuretic and electrolyte replenisher Option B Adsorbent and astringent Option C Saline laxative Option D Antacid and laxative So you have 10 second time for opting the answer So you can select your answer What is the use of Bismuth subcarbonate? The correct answer for this question is option B that is adsorbent and astringent. Bismuth subcarbonate is an adsorbent and also it can be used as astringent. What are the other properties or other use of bismuth subcarbonate? Bismuth subcarbonate can be used as an antiseptic agent and also it is used in the case of treatment of diarrhea. Okay, what are the uses? As in bismuth subcarbonate. One is adsorbent, then astringent, then antiseptic, then it can be used in the treatment of diarrhea. Okay, hope you got this one. Now we are moving to the next question, question number two. Philoquinone is an another name of. Philoquinone is an another name of. What is the synonym of philoquinone? Options are option A, vitamin K, option B, vitamin E, option C, vitamin D, option D, vitamin A. What is the other name of philoquinone? Now you can select your answer. Each correct answer carries one marks. Once the exam or 10 question is over, you can comment your mark, total marks. So the correct answer for this question is option A that is vitamin K. Vitamin K is also known as philoquinone. When we are specifically saying vitamin K1 is philoquinone. Vitamin K1 is known as Philoquinone, vitamin K2 is known as menaquinone, vitamin K3 is known as menadione. Okay? Vitamin K1 is philoquinone, vitamin K2 is menaquinone, vitamin K3 is menadione. What about option B that is vitamin E? Vitamin E is known as tocopherol, vitamin D is calciferol, vitamin A is retinol. Okay? These are the different names of different vitamins. Then vitamin B also has got some other components that is vitamin B1, B2, B3, B6 like that. So you have to study that one also very well. Now we are moving to the next question, question number 3. An amino acid considered as a lipotropic factor is. Which of the following amino acid is considered as a lipotropic factor? Options are option A, methionine, option B, tryptophan, Option C, histidine, and the last option, serine. Okay, which of the following is known as lipotropic factor, or which of the following amino acid is considered as lipotropic factor? Now you can opt your answer. The correct answer for this question is option A, that is methionine. Methionine is considered as a lipotropic factor. So you should know what is lipotropic factor. Lipotropic factor is or lipotrophic factors are the substances which increases the removal or which decreases the deposition of fat in the liver. Okay. It increases the removal of fat from the liver or it decreases the deposition of fat in the liver. That is lipotropic factor. What are the examples? Examples. First one is methionine as here. Okay. The second example is choline, third example betaine, then vitamin B9 or folic acid, then vitamin B12. Okay. What are the examples for lipotropic factors? One is choline, second one is methionine, then betaine, then vitamin B9 or folic acid, then vitamin B12 or cobalamin. These are the lipotropic factors. Now we are moving to the next question, question number 4. Which of the following is a plant growth regulator? Which of the following is considered as a plant growth regulator? Plant growth regulator will regulate the growth of the plant. Options are option A, anabasin. Option B, gibberlin. Option C, kelin. Option D, gendesin. Which of the following is considered as a 
plant growth regulator okay the correct answer for this question is option b that is gibberlin gibberlin is the plant growth regulator so what are the other plant growth regulators first one is auxin then gibberlin then cytokinin then ethylene and abscisic acid these are the plant growth regulators what are them one is auxin then gibberlin then cytokinin ethylene then abscisic acid these are the plant growth regulators okay here in this question gibberlin was there now we are going to the next question question number five melanin is derived from which of the following amino acid melanin is a pigment you know that one melanin is derived from which of the following amino acid options are option a histidine option b tyrosine option c valine option d tryptophan now you can select your answer the correct answer for this question that is melanin is derived from option b that is tyrosine melanin is derived from tyrosine another thing that is melatonin which is a hormone which is derived from tryptophan okay melanin is there melatonin is there melanin is a pigment melatonin is a hormone melanin is derived from tyrosine while melatonin is derived from tryptophan okay now we are going to the next question question number six the condensation of chromatin and shrinkage of nucleus leading to death is termed as what you will call for the condensation of chromatin and shrinkage of nucleus leading to the death of the cell is termed as option a karyorexis option b pycnosis option c karyolysis option d autophagy you can select your answer the correct answer for this question is that is condensation of chromatin the correct answer is option b that is pycnosis pycnosis is also called karyopycnosis karyopycnosis so we should know the terms here karyorexis what is a karyorexis what is karyolysis what is autophagy karyorexis first one we will see karyorexis what is karyorexis karyorexis is the destructive fragmentation of the nucleus karyorexis is karyorexis is destructive fragmentation of the nucleus of a dying cell it is the fragmentation of nucleus of a dying cell so what about a karyolysis karyolysis is the dissolution or complete dissolution of nuclear components of a dying cell the last one that is autophagy so what is autophagy autophagy is the body's way of cleaning out damaged cell in order to regenerate a newer cell okay so we studied karyorexis what is karyolysis what is karyopycnosis what is autophagy now we can move to next question question number 7 question is natural alkaloid used in the treatment of gout which of the following alkaloid is used in the treatment of gout we will see the option option a singonin option b colchicine option c reserpin and the last option that is emitting so which of the following alkaloid is used in the treatment of gout now you can have your answer the correct answer for this question is option b that is colchicin this one we studied in the pharmacognosy as well as in the pharmacology colchicin is used for the treatment of gout next question question number 8 standards for surgical dressings are given in standards for surgical dressings are given in that is coming from the jurisprudence subject option a schedule h option b schedule ff option c schedule f3 option d schedule f2 so which of the schedule describes about the standards for surgical dressings now you can select your answer the correct answer for this question that is the standards of for surgical dressings are included in the schedule f2 that's option d is the correct answer so what is schedule h schedule h is the list of substances which should be sold on the basis of the prescription of rmp or registered medical practitioner okay schedule h is the list of drugs or list of substances which should be sold on the basis of the prescription 
okay next one is schedule ff schedule ff is the standards for ophthalmic preparation schedule ff is related to standards of ophthalmic preparation option c that is schedule f3 which is related to standards for sterilized umbilical taps okay so schedule h is the list of drugs which should be sold on the basis of prescription of a doctor option b schedule f is related to ophthalmic preparation standard option c schedule f3 which is related to standards for the sterilized umbilical taps option d schedule f2 which is related to standards of surgical dressing now we are going to the next question question number nine classification of bacteria as heterotroph is based on classification of bacteria as heterotrophs is based on options are option a oxygen requisite option b growth temperature option c energy source option d nutrition requisite so on what basis bacteria are classified as heterotroph the correct answer for this question is option c that is energy source energy source based on the energy source some bacteria are classified as heterotrophs why these bacteria is called heterotrophs because heterotrophs are those bacteria or those organism that eat other plant or animal for their energy so if you know the term heterotrophs you can write the answer easily heterotrophs are the organism that eat other plant or animal for its energy so the correct answer is here energy source now we are going to the last question of this video question number 10 hydrogen peroxide assay is performed by hydrogen peroxide assay is performed by option a diazotization titration option b non aqueous titration option c neutralization titration and the last option that is redox titration okay hydrogen peroxide assay is performed by now you can select your answer The correct answer for this question is option D that is redox titration. Hydrogen peroxide assay is performed by redox titration. In next video we will see next 10 question that is from 11 to 20th questions. If you didn't subscribe until now my channel kindly subscribe my channel and press the bell button so that you will get the notification whenever I upload new videos. So the bonus question of this video is which of the following vitamin is water soluble which of the following is water soluble vitamin options are option a vitamin a option b vitamin b option c vitamin d option d vitamin k so you can comment the correct answer in the comment section thank you very much